happenings for a minute. So Beverly Hills, you know, came and went. The reunion is finally over. We are now filming a new season and we have this major shocking thing which happened to Dorit. Mm-hmm. Especially shocking given, oh wait, sorry. I don't want to interrupt. Maybe you want to say no, what happened. I, I, I think have, everyone knows. Well, I mean, I have so much to say about it. You know, the fact that, I mean, here's the thing. Like, can you imagine waking up and having two people standing at the foot of your bed. Like, well, it's shocking. Okay. One shocking thing that I noticed was that the people or the robbers or the ne'er-do-wells broke in at 11 p.m., which is kind of early for a robbery, in my opinion. Like, I feel like people, most people are up at 11 p.m. Is that most... crazy to say? No. It's Listen, I prefer to go to bed early, but that is not at all crazy to say. I mean, I think if you want to make sure someone's sleeping, it would be like two to four. Right, 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 right. Anyways, I just thought that was like, like, oh, I was like, that's pretty damn early to just be breaking into someone's home. You know, anyways. Well, I think you're horrifying. Terrifying. I I do feel like you know, generally you break in when hopefully the whole street is asleep. So like right. people aren't like in a lot, most people, I feel like, I, I guess, uh, other than David are still like, I think basically awake at 11. Yeah. Like so, at least heading to bed. Like people are, yeah, right. people are awake still. That is a very good detail to bring up. I mean, uh, should we start a true cr- crime podcast on the side? <laughs> I think we have to. I mean, it's kind of a good, that's an interesting detail, unless they were watching and they just waited for the lights to go off. But I do agree with you that wouldn't you want the whole street's lights to be off? Yeah. And I feel like, I mean, if you didn't want your, like the person you're intruding on to fight back, you'd want to kind of break in when they're asleep so that you could catch them off guard. I don't know. I've never robbed anybody, but that would be, I guess, my mindset going into it. It's that would be my mindset going into it yeah I mean yeah it's terrible I mean I think also the crazy detail about how they they broke in through the children's classroom um which I will just say is probably the playroom um and and yeah I mean the fact that she was you know at gunpoint and then they said uh they said we're gonna kill you you know or something and then she she said please don't kill me I'm a mother and then they said kill her but they didn't obviously you know right. and why didn't they that was very interesting why would they say kill her maybe just to scare her maybe so that she yeah, would just do probably. nothing so well well because i guess it took them a full 20 minutes to load up all those uh, probably trash bags i'm assuming mm-hmm. with all of that all of her birkins and hermes and louis vuitton everything we've seen everything they talked about during well, the it, reunion that's that what literally so interesting yes the night before that very episode talking about how she buys everything you know I mean, and just, it was spooky hearing and the fact that Andy had texted Lisa Rinna to say, you know, Hey, get your stuff out of that garage. You're a target now. And then literally the next day or in the next two days, Dorit gets robbed. Yeah. It's, I mean, okay. So I have a lot of things. Look, of course it's horrible. So let's just put that aside for a minute. We're yeah. not discussing like whether this is horrible or not right now, because it is obviously, I mean, I don't, who wouldn't think this is horrible. I just think Is it the right? So like you're saying this on the reunion. So, I mean, to me, it's like, was that the motivation that you heard this and said, there's our next target or, or is it the incessive nonstop social media posts Mm -hmm. where you are? I mean, do you follow her on Instagram? It's like, she dances in her closet. It's her, her reels and TikToks are in the closet. No, no, no. They're in the closet. So Forget about the fact like Dorit does a daily or every other day post where she's in the Balmain, the Gucci, <laughs> oh whatever it is, but forget the outfit. And I mean, P- PK has been in these, the children have been in these. These are 98% of the time from the closet. So if you go to her Instagram behind her in the Gucci, and she always says hashtag, you know, like she's yep, Gucci, yep. Wow. <laughs> but behind her, you see 18,000 you know, Louis and Gucci's and Beaumont's and, and Birkins it's in her closet there. You see all the shoes are over here, red bottoms everywhere. So it's in her closet. I mean, David, that- if a tree falls in the forest and no one hears it, does it, did it, did it make a sound? I mean, if Dorit <laughs> isn't doing these reels, does she even own those things? Like you got, if you got it, flaunt it. Right. I just think it's so interesting. This mentality 
that she that a lot of these women have where it's like I need everyone to know about all the stuff I have right constantly it's so gauche I mean I don't know if Heather Dubrow watches this podcast but she's also a target because she does the oh, very a major same thing target with yeah. her closet and all of her stuff displayed behind her anyways she does she does I mean so just take a look at Dorit's Instagram and just see that like if you are watching her and you ignore the outfit, you look behind her and you're like, oh my God, it's like, look, of course nobody deserves this, but it just, to me, goes back to like, you're asking to be robbed. And I tie this in with like Kim Kardashian, you know, Kim doesn't wear jewelry anymore in public. Like Kim, right. Kim takes her whole thing seriously. And yeah, she stepped up her detail, but like Kim, Kim won't wear anything in public anymore. And then you look at like Kyle, you're posting that you're on vacation. So it just makes you think on a bigger note of like, you know, they broke into Kyle's house when she was on vacation. Of course, like that is like asking to be robbed. Well, and, and do, I don't know if Kyle, uh, maybe we say, I don't know if Kyle lived in a gated community. I don't think Dorit does. No, I don't think so. Okay. And so this is, I obviously don't want to, I'm not trying to blame Dorit in any way. No one deserves for this to happen to them. Of course. I also think, though, there is a very real fact that as a parent, you know, if you are putting out that you have all these things constantly on social media, are you putting your family at risk? Like, are you, you know, Mm -hmm. is this something where you're making yourselves and your family a target for 'er ne'er-do-wells, as Chandler calls them? And I think that it's a really good lesson. I mean, thank goodness she's fine. Thank goodness they didn't do anything to her. But I think everyone who flaunts, you know, wealth and possessions on social media should realize that they are targets. And, you know, unless on some level, it's like, unless you can have, unless you can afford the the full-time security to guard all of your stuff, maybe you can't really afford it, you know? That's how I feel. I just feel like if this isn't a lesson for people to just, I mean, dial it back. I mean, that's what I take from this. Like, okay. Like obviously, I mean, Kathy Hilton has a ton of money. Like, I mean, I have Kathy stepped up her security, but it's different. Like they're not, they don't flaunt it. Like Kim did, Kim Kardashian did. Like, you're not going to go to Chloe or like you're not going to go to Chloe's house. She has as you know, plenty of money, but it's just Kim used to do that and she doesn't anymore. And I think look with what Kyle went through, it's just, yeah, of course no one deserves this. I'm just saying, if you look at her videos now, you're like, oh my God, this is like literally saying, come and rob me. It is. Like, right. that's, mm-hmm. It's well, I can't believe the closet. Like you're just looking and you see the bags and the shoes. You're just like, oh my God. I mean, Crystal's $95,000 Hermes bag. Oh my God. I, first of all, I think Hermes like bags are kind of ugly. And I thought that bag was also (laughs) kind of ugly. It looked like, um, like a shop front, like a window front of a store that was like turned turned into a bag. (laughs) But anyways, like that's, that's a hundred thousand dollars. I don't get, I don't get the Birkin. I don't really understand the Birkin Mm -mm. myself, but it's all just, yes. Now- yeah. Yeah. Go on. Well, I'm just saying those objects, they're not about the physical form that they take and, you know, their intrinsic beauty. They're about signaling, you know, insane wealth. Right. So, yeah. Anyway, but that's just, that's another, con- it's a, that's a broader, more philosophical so, conversation. Oh my God. Totally. But do also, we want- do we want to okay. address the fact that everyone, yeah. that there's all, well, there's a whole movement online of people that still say that this is a setup, that this is mm-hmm. fake. Right. I'm not saying it's so don't fucking come for me, <laughs> but that is what is on there on all the blogs that there are right. people saying, you know, that whole thing that Dorit was going to be fired and, you know, she has no storyline and all this other stuff that this was planned. That Someone was also saying. just, yeah, saying that, like, you know, you get robbed at 11 p.m. And then there's a story in Daily Mail at 9 a.m. the next morning. Like, you know, that's pretty good timing for Daily Mail. And my whole thing is like, look, I mean, where are the people? Like, I'm not saying, I mean, just if, you know what I mean? Like, who are these people? And... I don't know. It's just, 
Okay, so let's just though follow this this theory out, right? So this would assume that she has insurance because I don't think Dorit is going to give up hundreds of thousands of dollars, potentially millions of dollars worth of products for you know a storyline. I just don't think that. Um, so let's assume that she's insured, and then you know she's going to also commit insurance fraud. It just seems like it seems like a reach also- to me. Yeah, agreed. And I mean, her kids were also in the house. Like, would you really traumatize your kids over this? Like young, young kids with like a fake robbery? I don't know. She doesn't seem like that type of mom. Yeah, I mean, like, listen, it's far-fetched, right? But just listen, Erica and Tom are getting divorced and Tom defrauded like, you know, victims out of millions of dollars out in a plane crash. And he was like one of the most respected attorneys out there. So... I'm not saying take the hit. I'm just saying saying, like nothing shocks me with housewives anymore. Nothing. Right. Literally. Really? So (laughs) you think that there is, you think that there's potential that this is fake. I mean, listen, I would say 90%. I don't think this is a setup. I I really don't, but yeah, 10, I mean, just, I think that the, like fame is such a big drug. I, I do. And I just, I mean, look at Jen Shaw and like, I mean, there's just so much going on that is just crazy. So I really don't think that this, but I it wouldn't shock me. The fact that this is where people's minds go, my mm-hmm. mind went there before I read any of that. Like my mind really? went there. It did. And so I just feel when, when your mind thinks something and you just keep it to yourself, because it's so insane, then like you read it and you're like, well, if I thought this and now other people are mm-hmm. thinking this, I don't know. That's, yeah. that's the only thing. Like I didn't voice my opinion. I said, I'm insane. I, I need a life. I spend way too much time with the behind the velvet rope podcast. This is insanity, David, for someone to think that this is a setup. So get the thought out of your mind. And a minute later I moved on. And then like, you know, a day later, I see that it's all over and a million people are thinking this. And I'm just like, right. If if I, you know what I mean? If people have the same thoughts, I don't know. That's the only thing. What, what do you think of all the women showing up the next day? Teddy, everybody being photographed, you know, that that day, the day of, of. oh yeah. The day of the next, the very next morning. I, well, there's that. And now, I mean, they're re, you know, they're recreating either. They recreated this. They're, they're filming. They filmed it. They're recreating something. I don't think they're recreating like a Wait, break in, but they're like, what? Well, well they're that's like, my question. Are they filming it? Cause that will, I think really say a lot about well, right. And this was also the day Dorit was supposed to start filming like her first day, like Garcelle and, 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 Erica filmed like a gym scene. Like there were scenes in like Portia's bar mitzvah, but like bat mitzvah, but like this was Dorit's first day was the morning after this. It just, I mean, it just, yeah. that doesn't help and anyone who, who thinks that it may not be real. It's I'm just, not, it's, it's strange. I'm not saying there's a right or a wrong way to like have this trauma happen to you, but it's just interesting to note that like, you know, Kim Kardashian went off of social media. She basically kind of like changed as a person, like she doesn't wear jewelry in public anymore. And like, it'll just be, I guess, interesting to watch, you know, how does, how does Dorit move forward with after this like horrific thing happens? Does this like just fuel like more and more publicity or does she try to take a step back, you know, and just two different people and how they respond to it will, you know, be interesting. That's, that's the thing. And the thing is, which my thoughts just go to like, that is her brand though. You know, and I'm not saying that that's right. Like, I think a tragedy should overcome everything, but like, that's her brand. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, mm-hmm. if you think about Dorit on the show, like, look, you even ask, like, who is the best fashion sense? And I mean, Garcelle can't stand Dorit, but she's like, I'm giving you my honest answer. It's Dorit. Like, so her brand is, and I think she knows it. I think that's why these closet things went like escalated. I think Dorit knows, like, my brand is being the fashion girl and right. wearing head to toe labels. That is now mm-hmm. my brand, which she created, but like Rinna doesn't need a brand. She's Rinna, you know what I right. mean? She's like has Melrose and days of our lives. And I just think this was Dorit's brand. Yeah. Well, and I wonder, you know, how much of this is, if it is a conspiracy set up thing, like to prove that she has a lot of expensive things and that they're, you know, that she's not renting things or whatever, like to show that she's got, you know, the money. I don't know. 
Maybe. It's just the whole thing is so strange. 